This is the Mahatanha Sankhya Sutta, and it's Sutta number 38 in the Majjhima Nikaya, the greater discourse on the destruction of craving. Now, the thing about Sati in the story is Sati, son of the fisherman. That's how he is identified here. And there are other Satis in other stories, but the key thing to remember about Sati <laughs> is that he sati son of the fisherman, but he became a monk because he couldn't stand the smell of fish. And this is a little joke that's been handed down for centuries. He didn't like the smell of fish. It was noted somewhere and, and it comes to us that he just wanted to go. <laughs> okay, so let's just get into it. The setting for this is thus I have heard on one occasion, the blessed one was living at Sawati in Jettis Grove, Anapapindikas Park. Now, on that occasion, a pernicious view had arisen in the bhikkhu named Sati, son of the fisherman. And thus, as I understand the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One, he said, it is this the same consciousness that runs and wanders through the round of rebirths and not another. So this is a belief in an eternalistic soul. Okay, that you personally are going to be born again, again, again. Okay, several bhikkhus, having heard about this, they went to the bhikkhu Sati and they asked him straight up, Friend Sati, is it true that such a pernicious view has arisen in you? Exactly so, friends. As I understand the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One, it is the same consciousness that runs and wanders through the round of rebirths, not another. Then those bhikkhus desiring to detach him from that pernicious view, they pressed and questioned and cross-questioned him thus, Friend Sati, do not say so. Do not misrepresent the Blessed One. It is not good to misrepresent the Blessed One. The Blessed One would not speak thus. For in many ways the Blessed One has stated consciousness to be dependently arisen. Since without a condition there is no origination of consciousness. Yet, although pressed and questioned and cross-questioned again by those bhikkhus, in this way, the bhikkhu sati, son of the fisherman, was obstinately adhered to that pernicious view and continued to insist upon it. And since the bhikkhus were able to detach him from, not able to detach him from the pernicious view, they went to the Blessed One, and after paying homage to him, they sat down on one side and told him all that had occurred, adding, Venerable Sir, since we could not detach this bhikkhu sati, son of the fisherman, from this pernicious view, we have reported this matter to the Blessed One. And then the Blessed One addressed a certain bhikkhu thus, Come bhikkhu, tell the bhikkhu sati, son of the fisherman, in my name, that the teacher calls him. Yes, venerable sir, he replied, and he went to the bhikkhu Sati and told him, the teacher calls you, friend Sati. Yes, friend, he replied, and he went to the blessed one, and after paying homage to him, he sat down at one side. The blessed one then asked him directly, Sati, is it true? that the following pernicious view has arisen in you. As I understand the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One, it is the same consciousness that runs and wanders through the round of rebirths, not another. Exactly so, Venerable Sir. As I understand the Dhamma taught by you, it is the same consciousness that runs and wanders through the round of rebirths and not another. What is that consciousness, Sati? Venerable Sir, it is that which speaks and feels and experiences here and there the result of good and bad actions. <sighs> Misguided man, to whom have you ever known me to teach the Dhamma that way? Misguided man, have I not stated in many ways that consciousness 
to be dependently arisen, since without a condition there is no origination of consciousness. But you, misguided man, you have misrepresented us by your wrong grasp and injured yourself and stored up much demerit, for this will lead to your harm and suffering for a long, long time. Then the Blessed One addressed the bhikkhus thus, Bhikkhus, what do you think? Has this bhikkhu sati, son of the fisherman, kindled even a spark of wisdom in the Dhamma and discipline? And this conversation is sort of like this. Every time he says, misguided man, it's like, you stupid fool, why aren't you listening to me when I'm teaching you? That's kind of what he's saying, okay? And then he's saying, you know, he hasn't gotten one thing I've said to him in class. That's what he's saying. Like a teacher would say to you in the university right now, you're not listening in class. Listen and take notes and follow the instructions, okay? Then he says, how could he, venerable sir, they say to the, to the Buddha. No, venerable sir, he has not gotten anything, basically they're saying. So when this was said, the bhikkhu sati, son of the fisherman, sat silent, dismayed, with shoulders drooping and his head down, glum without any response. He was silent. Then knowing this, the blessed one told him, misguided man, you will be recognized for your own pernicious view. That's how you will be remembered. I shall question the bhikkhus on this matter myself. So then he's, he's faced with a problem. He is like a gypsy school of meditation, wandering around the country. When one person gets this wrong and starts speaking to new monks coming in and they discover it, it can mess everything up for the group that is trying to become Sotapanna. This is what's happening here, okay? And they have to stop it right there because if you don't understand this part, then you, the part about the dependent origination, then you can't really progress very well, okay? And then the Blessed One addressed the bhikkhus thus, Bhikkhus, do you understand the Dhamma taught by me as the Bhikkhu Sati, son of the fisherman, does when he misrepresents us by wrong grasp and injures himself and stores up so much demerit? No, venerable sir, for in many discourses, sir, the Blessed One has stated that consciousness is to be dependently arisen since without a condition, there is no origination of any consciousness. Good, bhikkhus, it is good that you understand the Dhamma taught by me thus, for in many ways I have stated consciousness to be dependently arisen. And since without a condition, there is no origination of consciousness. But this monk, Sati, son of the fisherman, misrepresents us by his wrong grasp and injures himself and stores up much demerit, for this will lead to his harm and suffering of this misguided man for a very long time. And basically, he is somewhere listening to me read this right now. That's the thing. He's put somewhere when he passes on. He actually quit and he left not long after this. But in the end, we think of him somewhere. He's hearing us read this once again after a very, very long time. Everybody is remembering Sati, son of the fisherman. That's what's so crummy. All right. Conditionality of consciousness is the next section. Monks. Consciousness is reckoned by the particular condition dependent upon which it arises. When consciousness arises dependent on the eye and forms, it is reckoned as eye consciousness. When consciousness is arising on the ear and sounds, it is reckoned as ear consciousness. When consciousness arises dependent on the nose and odors, it is reckoned as nose consciousness. When consciousness is arising, dependent on the tongue and flavors, it is reckoned as tongue consciousness. 
when consciousness arises dependent on the body and tangibles, it is reckoned as body consciousness. When consciousness arises dependent on the mind and mind objects, it is reckoned as mind consciousness. This is just as fire is reckoned by the particular condition dependent on which it burns. Therefore, when fire burns dependent on logs, it is reckoned as a log fire. And when fire depend, is dependent on faggots, it is reckoned as a faggot fire. And when fire burns dependent on grass, it is reckoned as a grass fire. And when it burns dependent on cow dung, it is a cow dung fire. And when it burns dependent on chaff, it is reckoned as a chaff fire. And when fire burns dependent on rubbish, it is reckoned on a rubbish fire. And so too, in the same way, consciousness is reckoned by the particular condition dependent on which it arises. So it's explaining to you what I told you about consciousness when we said, what is the being made of? And we said, it's ba basically body, feeling, perception, thoughts, and consciousness. And when we got to consciousness, I drew you a picture of a person with a big circle inside them. That's the swimming pool of consciousness, unnamed. It's like the chaff that's still lying in the field or the logs that haven't even been cut yet that are in part, just in the trees. It's just sitting there. And it isn't going to be called a log fire until we have logs and we build the fire, right? It's not going to be a chaff fire until we pick up the chaff and put it in a heap and burn it, correct? Or faggots or cow dung or anything else. This is the same thing it's saying. In the body, this becomes named through the operation of the optical system, the auditory system, the olfactory system, the oral system, the physical system, and the mental system of the body. And those systems are where your six sense doors sit, okay? So when consciousness arises dependent on the eye forms, it repeats this whole thing, and it tells you of what eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, and then tongue consciousness, and then body consciousness, and then mind consciousness. So how do we experience the outer world in our life in this existence? We do that through five external sense doors, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body. And then we also experience our internal experience through our mind. That is how our whole experience happens in this existence. The next section is the general questionnaire on being. Bhikkhus, do you see this has come to be? Yes, venerable sir, they say. They understand what I just explained to you. Bhikkhus, do you see its origination occurs with that as nutriment? This happens with that as nutriment. Yes, venerable sir. Bhikkhus, do you see, with the cessation of that nutriment, what has come to be is subject to cessation? Yes, Venerable Sir. When you burn all the chaff, the fire goes out, right? Okay. So, Bhikkhus, does doubt arise when one is uncertain thus? Has this come to be? Yes, Venerable Sir. Bhikkhus, does doubt arise? arise when one is uncertain thus. Does its origination occur with that as nutriment? Yes, Venerable Sir. Bhikkhus, does doubt arise when one is uncertain thus? With the cessation of that nutriment is what has come to be subject to cessation? Yes, Venerable Sir. Bhikkhus, is doubt abandoned in one who sees as it actually is with proper wisdom, thus this has come to be? Yes, Venerable Sir. Monks, is doubt abandoned in one who sees as it actually is with proper wisdom, thus it's 
origination occurs with that as nutriment. Yes, venerable sir. Monks, is doubt abandoned in one who sees as it actually is with proper wisdom with the cessation of that nutriment, what has come to be is subject to cessation. Yes, venerable sir. So, vicus, okay, see, this, okay, let's finish the doubt. Vicus, are you thus free from doubt here? This has come to be? Yes, venerable sir. Vicus, are you thus free from doubt here? Its origination occurs with that as nutriment. Yes, venerable sir. Bikus, are you thus free from doubt here? With the cessation of that nutriment, what has come to be is subject to cessation. Yes, venerable sir. So this is where the guts, the, the, the body of his teaching, uh, the method, it's where the method of his teaching is being expounded upon, right? This is where he's saying, did you see it and you believe it? Yes, I did. See, that's what this is right here. That's why knowledge and vision must happen in order for you to attain and grow, or in order for you to grow the wisdom that he's talking about. It's different from other teachings. You see, you can say in yoga, uh, in some yogas, you can say, they told me this is what this is, and I can do it mildly, so I kind of know it. Yeah, okay. But a lot of people listen to the teacher and then say, I know it. Or they read it in a book and say, then I know it. I'm an expert. But you're not, are you? So he wanted you to know this, but internally know it. This, thus, he had no way of writing it in books to give it to you, so... He, um, and actually they say there were books, some people have told me that in archaeology, but they don't put really important things in books, they teach it differently. That's what the masters were doing here in India. So they made you see it, say it, and see it for yourself, and experience it, and then you were allowed to say, I know it. And that's what this is all about, okay? So the next part he says, Vickers, has it been seen well by you, as it actually is with proper wisdom thus. This has come to be, yes, venerable sir. Has it been seen well by you as it actually is with proper wisdom thus? Its origination occurs with that as nutriment. And every time he says nutriment, he's saying cause. Cause effect is what he's talking about, but more than just an average cause and effect. He's refining this whole thing. Now he says, its origination occurs with that as nutriment? Yes, venerable sir. Because has it been seen well by you as it actually is with proper wisdom, thus with the cessation of that nutriment, what has come to be is subject to cessation. Yes, venerable sir. Bhikkhus, purified and bright as this view is, if you adhere to it, cherish it and treasure it and treat it as if it's a possession, would you then understand that the Dhamma has been taught as similar to a raft, being for the purpose of crossing over, but not for the purpose of grasping? And they say, no, venerable sir. Bhikkhus, purified and bright as this view is, if you do not adhere to it, cherish it, treasure it, and treat it as a possession, would you then understand the Dhamma has been taught as similar to a raft, being for the purpose of crossing over, but not for the purpose of grasping? See? Yes, venerable sir. Do you get that part? Why is that so important? Once you understand what I'm going to teach you tonight, if you just hang on to that and you don't use it for the proper reason and then let go of it, then you have not done what he is asking you to do. He is at teaching you a tool tonight. And he wants you to use it until you know it 
internally and externally, completely, and see it in everything. That's what you're being taught. But if you were to learn it in a book and go and expound upon it and brag upon it and talk about it, but not use it in your life, you would not be doing what he's asking. You see? Okay. The next section, nutriment and dependent origination. Because there are these four kinds of nutriment for the maintenance of beings that already have come to be and for the support of those about to come to be. What four are they? They are physical food as nutriment, gross or subtle. Contact is the second. Mental volition is the third. And consciousness is the fourth. You want me to read it again? Okay. Yes. Physical food is the nutriment, the food for the body that is gross or subtle. There is certain food that is uh, the, the teaching, a kind of food that is subtle in you that will help you. Contact is the second, mental and volition. volition is the third, and, and consciousness. consciousness is the fourth. Now, monks, there are four kinds of nutriment. These four kind have what as their source, what as their origin, from what are they born and produced. These four kinds of nutriment have craving as their source craving as their origin. They are born and produced from craving. And this craving has what as its source, what as its um, origin, and what is born and produced. Craving has feeling as its source. Feeling comes before the craving. And this feeling has what as its source. Feeling has contact as its source. So contact is coming before the feeling. And this contact has what as its source. Contact has the sixfold base as its source. And this is sixfold base has what as its source. The sixfold base has mentality materiality as its source. Mentality materiality has what as its source. Mentality materiality has consciousness as its source. And this consciousness has what as a source. Consciousness has formations as a source. And these formations have what as their source, what as their origin, ignorance. from what are they born and produced. Okay. These formations have ignorance as their source, ignorance as their origin, they are born and they are produced from ignorance.